When creating sound effects, there are two types of sound assets that you need to be aware of. They are sound wave data and sound cues. Let's jump into the content browser and have a look at these. I'm going to make sure we're searching for all assets. I'm going to take my object type area here in the filter, switch that to all types. And if you scroll down, you'll see sound wave data. Now, a sound wave data asset you can think of as really just like a wave file. It's just the sound itself. And you can double click any of these and sample them. Affirmative. So yeah, he'll talk to you. There are all kinds of sound effects included with UDK. Feel free to search through them. A lot of them have to do with various actions that the characters will perform, all of your weapons, all of your music. It's all in here, even the announcer. Now, the other type of asset you have is a sound cue. Now, a sound cue is more than just a sound effect, where a sound wave data is really just like a typical wave file. A sound cue is the sound effect combined with a series of instructions to control how playback is going to occur. Now, let me go ahead and show you how these work. We can double click any of these and sample them as well. And at the outset, they may seem just exactly like a sound wave data. But they'll do some interesting things as you start to scroll through. Now, let me, there's a particular one I want to grab for us real quick. If I scroll down past all of the uh, various footsteps. There's one called A Character Robot Impact Jib Medium Q. Now each time I double click this, notice that the sound is different. That's because we have several different actual sound waves that are being combined together randomly so that every time the engine called on the sound cue to play, we'd get a different one. Now that's only one example of how sound cues can be very, very powerful. But on top of that, sound cues are edited through a visual editing system called the Sound Cue Editor. Let me show that to you real quick. If we right click on any sound cue, we can choose Edit Using the Sound Cue Editor. And you get a little editor that's very similar to Kismet or the Material Editor, in which you can take sound wave data in the form of a visual node and combine them together with a variety of other nodes to create your final effect. So in this case, we have three sound effects, which we can sample individually by clicking the Play Selected Node button up here in the toolbar. And there's this one, and this one. Now, these are all being combined together through a random node, which is just going to randomly select each one. Notice in its settings that we have randomize without replacement, so it'll make sure that all three of them play before we repeat. Then we have a modulator. This is actually giving us even more variety because it's modulating the pitch each time the sound plays. So the pitch will drop down to 80% and all the way up to 120%. We're also modulating the volume as well. Finally, we're attenuating the sound so that we can position it in 3D space and give it some fall off. In the end, all of that is plugged into our final sound cue, allowing us to get a variety of different types of sound. So I'm going to click the play sound cue, and what this, is, what this will do is add up all of these different effects that we've strung together and give us the result. So you can see where a sound wave data is really just a simple sound effect, and a sound cue is a combination of one or more sound effects along with a series of instructions to give you a lot of control over how playback is going to occur. Now that's really all I wanted to cover here is just introduce you to those two assets, so that will wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.